Now this is called school choice. And what it does is allows athletes to be able, or actually students, to be able to change schools to get out of a bad educational zone. But when, before this law was passed, athletic directors, they made it clear that this was also going to affect athletics. But the lawmakers just thought that it was best that if I'm a, a great student, I should not be trapped into a bad school zone. And as long as I'm able to get there, or the student is able to get there, they should be able to go to whatever school they want. So the law ended up passing, and it took effect with the 2017 school year. But what also happened, it allowed athletes to switch schools at their own will. Now, what's strange about this law is that in Florida, an athlete can play for as many schools as they want. For instance, I'm a great football player. I'm a top recruit. This is my last year. I want to have a winning team. So I go down the street and I play for school number school A. After the season is over with, then I can go across the street and play for school number B for basketball. Once basketball season is over with, then I can go run school, run track at a school down the street and possibly compete for a state championship. And after all that is over, guess what a kid can do? They can transfer back to their home school and graduate with their buddies. Huh? Make sense? Don't make any damn sense to me, but that's the way Florida is. So now, let's ratchet it up a little bit. Alachua County changed the game even more so. Before the transfer in Florida, you had to follow specific rules. Generally, it evolved around military transfers or if you were removed from your home by the state. Well, Alachua County has added an additional policy. You can be able to change schools in Alachua County on a good conduct policy. So, whereas you had to be situated before, before you can change schools or play sports for another school, before the season started, you can do that. But now, Alachua County has made it available where you can change schools in the middle of the season and still become immediately eligible. Make sense? Well, that's what they're doing. So just for instance, if you're playing in school from Alachua County and they're in in week eight, you're gonna play them. Well, you've been scouting this team all along where you keep an eye on them, so you have an idea about what's going on with that particular team you're gonna play. But by the time you play them, they got completely different personnel or have bolstered their roster over the course of the season through transfers. Now, it's still technically illegal to recruit, but how else would you get a player in to your program to fill certain holes at a particular time of year? Doesn't make much sense, do it? Well, that's what's going on. But despite how you get the athletes, in my opinion, if an athlete doesn't want to play for you, let them go. Find somebody else. Fill the hole. There's always somebody there that might end up being a better teammate and you're getting rid of a cancer. But when you get those athletes, you still have to coach them. And when you get into this. So again, when you get the athletes, you have to be able to coach them because most of the time, if, if you've been able to fill out a roster of, of, the, of the athletes that you need to get your program humming like it should be, you're going to be in a lot of blowouts. So it comes down to the playoffs. When you get to the playoffs, eventually you're going to run across a team that's going to be able to match up with you and you're not going to be able to blow them out. And that's when you start to have problems. Now, I'm going to give you a couple examples. First example, I mentioned Alachua County. There was a small school in Alachua County that had built a roster that makes some college roster alumni books or roster books during the games look bad. For instance, when you go to a college game, you pull out a roster book or a program, you see that these athletes are from different places. Well, there's a certain school in Alachua County where they have players from all over the place in a school that's grade 6 through 12 and they have less than 200 students but you have a whole bunch of people playing for this team that are not from that town so how they get them i don't know well anyway this school they ranked up 500 points in offense made a whole lot of blowouts they're going to go win the state championship we're going to win one for the home team well when they got to the playoffs they had about the first week they came out and they hit the average 50 in the first game. Then the second game, those numbers started to come down. They only got half. Then finally, they got to the semifinals and they got shut out. 
Now, how the hell do you score 50 points a game during the regular season, get to the playoffs, and get shut out? Those numbers do not compute. Now, let's go back a little bit. The coach, all during the year, will heap praise on his team. Oh, we're the most explosive in the area, and, and we're going to win the state championship. We didn't say that, but he was implying that they were going to go on and win the state championship, and we're going to be able to compete with anybody we play against. He heaped praise on his team all the time, talked about how fast they were. They've been the fastest team around in so many years, which is not true, but that's what they tried to put out there. But when they got shut out, he made an excuse about his quarterback being hurt. Yeah, his quarterback may have been injured, but he ain't 50 points injured, and he didn't stop the other team from scoring, and that was pointed out by the other team. So my point to you is this. If you're scoring 50 points a game in a regular season, you should be able to find a way to score some points in the playoffs, especially when it counts. This team didn't do it, and when they lost, he didn't give credit to the other team. So as far as I'm concerned, with the way they grab players, and, and like I, again, I don't give a damn if a player don't want to play for you, let them go. But if you accumulate all this talent, you got to coach him. And getting shut out in the playoffs when you've been scoring 50 points a game, as far as I'm concerned, that is poetic justice. Now, examples number two and three, I have put on a separate video, separate videos to show you how coaching can mess up a good team. Now, just a quick note. On the second example, it's the 5A state championship game up in Georgia where Warren Robbins matched up with Bainbridge. Now, I had a personal connection with Bainbridge. All I had to do was say yes, and I could 